Uh, the fifth component would be the hard drive. The hard drives now are of two different kinds. There is the SSD hard drive, solid state drive, and there is the normal hard drives that have been going on for years now. The SSD drives are much better, are much faster, and are, uh, have been a really a revolution in the way programs start, the operating system starts, and everything really works fast. But that doesn't mean that if you uh, can't uh, afford an SSD drive, you cannot work. The normal hard drives are still plenty fast, are still very good, and uh, most important of all, are also way cheaper still. And uh, <clears throat> now that we have uh, hard drives of uh, uh, very, very big sizes. So, so in terms of the hard drive, my advice is this. If you can afford it, buy an SSD drive where you can put your operating system and all your programs. Uh, your SSD drive in this case might be uh, 250 gigabytes the hard drive which is not too expensive these days and uh, you can still find very good brands for decent price again Corsair's hard drive are very good Samsung hard drives are very very good and um, you can uh, search online uh, for example what's the best hard drive under $200 and, and uh, have an idea of uh, uh, how to rank the hard drives and learn a little bit more about them. You want to have a different hard drive for all your storage, all your files, all your projects, all your videos that you record with your camera, all your images, and keep the hard drive separate from the system. This will allow you to format your computer, reinstall Windows um, or install your Linux or your operating system without affecting ever your data, your hard drive that contains all your storage. And this is a really important point. Uh, so you will have a fast hard drive that drives the system, the applications and everything else and a slightly less fast hard drive but uh, plenty of space to put all your stuff in there. Um, I do different, different hard drives for different uh, kind of use because if you do a lot of video editing um, you want a different kind of hard drive, probably a faster hard drive than if you do uh, just computer graphics where the storage uh, speed is not as important as if you were doing editing in 4K for example. But for each thing that I do I use different hard drives. So I don't use the same hard drive for my 3D production and the video editing. The video editing is on a separate drive. So I have a total of four hard drives in my computer. One is uh, uh, the system drive, an SSD, and the other three are uh, 7200 RPMs, uh, fast drives um, that are about two terabytes each. So this gives me plenty of space and uh, uh, when I do something, uh, for example, if I am uh, editing a um, video, I can still, or I'm doing motion graphics, I can still use uh, another application doing 3D computer graphics that is reading, for example, texture from another hard drive. Um, this gets a little bit comp more complicated than that. I don't want to confuse you. You just need to know that you want a faster hard drive for your system <clears throat> and more space for your, your storage and they need to be separate. So at this point you have your machine assembled but you still need to pick up a monitor. The monitor it's a delicate thing. It's, uh, uh, there are a lot of monitors of different brands, different characteristics, different qualities and a lot of different resolution right now and uh, it's uh, hard to pick one that will last for a long time if you don't have enough money. So my advice for you is, th is this one. Buy a decent monitor. If you are doing 3D computer animation, you don't need a very, very, very accurate monitor just yet. You will probably need it as soon as you start outputting your uh, uh, projects for a TV, for independent movies, um, and everything that requires basically a different output from your computer alone. Uh, what that means is it, uh, while you work for yourself, while you are doing projects for yourself, it's very likely that you will watch your uh, content mostly on your own monitor and it doesn't really matter at that point if there is a little bit of variation when you put it online and uh, people with other monitors will look at it. Um, it's impossible to have a very 100% uh, accurate uh, reproduction in, uh, in uh, everywhere. So if on my monitor what you've done will look different from somebody else's monitor, even though my monitor is calibrated. 
uh, in theory if we are all calibrated perfectly we should be able to see the same thing but each monitor has a different characteristics and so each monitor reproduces the colors differently and uh, there is another difference there I will have a, I will have a detailed lesson about uh, uh, how color management work in a later video for now what you need to know is that you don't need to spend a ton of money to have a decent monitor what you can do is buy a good HD monitor I think the best resolution right now will be uh, the quad HD resolution which is a good in between uh, the HD the full HD resolution and the 4k that is still a little bit expensive to buy but you can find decent quad HD monitor um, that look pretty good and uh, will give you enough time of use um, before you need to switch to a different monitor so uh, I have good consideration of business monitors as well as Dell monitors well, Dell always has some promotions on them um, and uh, uh, I'm sure you can find something that reflects your budget what you want to do next is by a calibrator which is a unit that basically connects via USB to your machine and calibrates through the video card the, col the colors of your monitor so that you have a more accurate reproduction of the color themselves so don't spend a ton of money on your monitor just yet because you might spend hours and hours just moving rigs if you want to be an animator and you don't need in that case such a good quality monitor uh, or even a modeling you will spend more and more time of your day modeling things not really painting things or editing things but uh, um, if you want to be a digital matte painter on the other side or a compositor then you need to definitely have a good quality monitor and an accurate calibration but you can achieve that with not too expensive monitor as well and finally the other thing I want uh, to recommend is to always get used to backing up your your stuff it's important that you have a backup system the ideal thing would be to have a separate hard drive that is never in uh, power if not when you are actually using it to to do the backup so it's completely um, independent from anything that happens to the to the uh, electricity in the house and another option would be to use a cloud system but given the complexity of um, a 3d production I wouldn't say um, I would say that this is not the ideal solution so what you want to do is uh, uh, buy an external hard drive uh, or even two it's even better to have two backups just to avoid any issues if this is work that you have to deliver to somebody you have to be sure that you have a backup copy and you want to back up your work at least once a day if not twice a day um, if you lose half a day of work or even a day of work is not the same as if you lose a week of work obviously so it's really important even if you're starting out now it's a good practice to actually get used to the idea of backing up your stuff and make sure that you have the hard drive just for that not uh, videos on them no movies just for hard, just for uh, archiving purpose and for restoring in case you need to if you follow these advices you will be in a good place you will not need to spend a lot of money to build a machine that will give you enough power for now enough capabilities for now to create good 3d content and you will not have problems if you lose data um, to recover this content finally there are the other normal things like a keyboard the mouse uh, um, what else uh, maybe a webcam I mean these things you can buy uh, something that is not too expensive it's crazy that today there are keyboards that cost 150 plus dollars and uh, just for gaming uh, but for work you don't really need anything so sophisticated you need a comfortable keyboard be sure that your position on the chair if you work on the chair is ergonomic enough or even better if you can work on a stand-up desk that will help your back and your um, wrists are properly placed on the keyboard so um, I wouldn't buy a keyboard because it has uh, all the fancy colors on it I would buy a keyboard because it's comfortable to type doesn't give you too much resistance on your finger and the wrists are comfortably uh, put on the desk and the mouse is the same thing really uh, check your ergonomics check how your uh, hand is on your mouse if mouse is too big you will feel fatigue in your wrists and it's not good um, it's important even if this seems uh, small things right now I've done this job for long enough that this thing would have had an impact uh, had I not paid attention to them so start now start well 
Um, one accessory that I would suggest to buy if you want to be a composer, if you want to be a digital matte painter, if you want to uh, do texturing or even if you want to do 3D modeling, it's uh, the Wacom tablet. You can buy a Wacom tablet which is like this one and uh, what this does is that <coughs> you have a pen and you can write and uh, draw on the pen as if you were writing on the monitor. It needs a little bit of time to get used to but it's definitely a great tool um, because you are definitely going to be more precise with the pen if you are painting than with the mouse and it's also helping your wrist uh, to, to avoid fatigue and avoid uh, uh, problems in, in the later future. Um, there are other options as well. Now there are Cintiq where basically you can um, draw and paint and work straight on your monitor, right on your monitor, but they are very expensive and unless you want to throw your money away right now, you don't want to buy any of those to start with. They don't affect your productivity in a way that is worth you know uh, having tr money trouble so don't go there so i would definitely recommend a wacom tablet to speed up your workflow so that's it i think uh, this will give you a global idea of what you need uh, to start with your production uh, visual effects again don't hide yourself behind the lack of hardware the lack of power but on the other side learn how to overcome these obstacles they will always be even in the big visual effects companies we can't uh, view the whole scene at once because there is too many things in there the complexity is too high and even if we have very powerful machines this doesn't matter because the complexity of what we do is even higher the most powerful machine can show so start today get used to the idea of solving problems instead of finding excuses and find ways to go around the problems and to solve them um, this is true for most of the pipeline most of the specialties in the pipeline uh, lighters have to fight constantly with long render times and uh, too many things to render so the RAM is never enough and animators and rigger have to find against slow frame rates, slow playback when uh, uh, the animator want to use the, the rigs um, and uh, the effects guys have to fight for the simulation to be done in a faster way and they can and so that they can also see what they're doing on screen and the modelers are fighting uh, for the resolution of their models that is too big and the video card is not powerful enough everybody is fighting with these things and you will always be fighting so it's better you start now and stop complaining and find solution to your problems so I think that's it I hope that this video will give you an idea of where to go with your next computer and if you have questions please uh, write them in the comments below uh, comment this video and like it if you like it and please subscribe to this channel and share the content with your friends bye